So Jade, I just mentioned that, that during the state of play, uh, it was like the glorified Suicide Squad premiere. That was his exact quote moments it ago. It really was, dude. That thing took up like 10 minutes time. This is, it was, a, I believe it was like an eight. I saw a gameplay trailer and I went to watch it on stream to like do a quick reaction to it. And it was eight minutes. And I was like, Jesus. Um, Which is good. Like we need more of that. I miss those days. Sony well, was the best at it. It was always yeah. showing long, raw gameplay footage of whatever the product was trying to sell. Yeah. And they were fantastic at it. That's why they were yeah. always the best at E3. Yeah. This is Rocksteady's game, the developers of the Batman Arkham Asylum series. And they've been developing this game for eight years, which is a long time. Um, their first game since... What was... They didn't do... God, their last they, game was Arkham Knight. Was it Arkham... Was Arkham Knight Arkham or Arkham Knight. City? Arkham remember. Knight was their last one. Okay. No, uh... Yeah, Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight was their last city. I lose. I lose. You just said Arkham Knight was their last city. <laughs> this last game. Holy crap. Uh, Gotham Knights was uh, yeah, yeah. Warner Brothers Montreal. But there was that like Origins or something too. That wasn't them. That was Origins was actually after City came out and Origins okay. was done by I forgot who, but it wasn't yeah, not Rocksteady. Them. So much hyped. Rocksteady's been hyped up a lot since uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, since the original game. And uh, what what are your thoughts on this game? Because I have mine, but I'm gonna hold back until until you go. And I, I also saw David Jaffe's reaction to this game <laughs> online. You love David Jaffe, man. No, I don't know that I love him, but I Challenge. I'm always interested Mayor in what he has to say. David Jaffe on every podcast. <laughs> difficulty impossible. Um, the I, I think the game looks really good. Like it really did. Uh, but then uh, somebody. I was watching the show with one of my coworkers and he goes, man, this game looks like crackdown. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I heard that comparison. Oh my God. I hate that. I hated that so much. Um, the game looks good. I don't have anything to really be like n upset about other than I guess I, I want it to be like the stealth Batman games, but mm -hmm. this isn't a Batman game. This oh, is a, suicide a shooter squad. It's a shooter. Yeah, it's a more shooter. Than anything. Yeah. It's a third-person shooter, and you fly all over the map. Like I'll fly over the map, destroy shit. The game looks fun. It really, it looks like mayhem. It looks like craziness. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll pick it up day one. I'm still a little bit like reluctant ever since like Gotham Knights. Uh, whenever Gotham Knights, like a week or two before it launched, they finally like announced in their Discord that the game wasn't gonna like run at 60 frames on like. I remember that. Console. Wasn't it like? Wasn't it like? 23 frames per second or something there's a big controversy yeah, about the low. frame rate yeah the frame rate was very low and like the game was buggy at launch too so uh, i'm still not over that i'm kind of like frustrated about it still so yeah. i know it's rock steady it's not wb montreal yeah. but i remain hesitant because if they were able to keep that from like leaving for so long before launch for gotham knights who knows what they're trying to you know hold behind the curtains yeah. before Suicide Squad launches. It's been it's been really a weird ride because Rocksteady, there was there was rumors of what they were working on for a long time. And it sounded like maybe they had multiple pitches, which is not you know, that that's normal. And I, I don't know, with the way DC has been managed over the last decade, <laughs> so with with selecting their projects and what to move forward with, like they started this this game probably at the same time, like like during Jared Leto Joker era, you know, like that was the suicide squad. They probably initially had, um, but I, I look at this game and I, I worry. And the, the crackdown comparisons are interesting. Cause I actually like the original crackdown, but when I watch the gameplay, all I can think of is like, this seems like an Xbox 360 PS3 era, like game design, but with much better graphics and much larger scale. And you know, some of the stuff does like, Oh, like that's kind of cool. That makes me chuckle. But, I've been kind of worried since Arkham Asylum, the original, that Rockstar, and I, I want to be wrong about this. Rocksteady. Rocksteady, sorry. <laughs> but the, but this actually applies to Rockstar too, but I'm not, we won't talk about that. I've been worried that Rocksteady is a one-trick pony. And, and they, they made an amazing gameplay format. Arkham Asylum is a great game. The follow-up, all of them that they made are great games. But they stuck very closely to that br blueprint. And um, now they're going to a shooter and 
It's game as a service, which a lot of people are are hating on. That was with Jaffe's big thing when they showed like the battle pass and stuff. I agree. Jaffe was like gagging himself on the stream and and he's like, "Could we stop with this?" And he's like holding his stomach and um I I I, I think it's really strange that we've seen so many games. Like like the Avengers game was similar. Like they're trying to make these game as a service games out of games that clearly aren't built for game as a service. Like they're not pseudo MMO. It's not like a destiny style gameplay loop. It's like, here's a single player game with a battle pass. That's supposed to make you grind it. And, and most of the time it does not work. It, it's so um, my theory is, is that the reason why they're doing it is because like, that's what's obviously making the most money, right? Oh, sure. Um, I, I think people are looking at the success of other games too much and trying to replicate that business model. And I'm going to use Genshin Impact as an example here because Genshin is probably the most wealthiest ecosystem of a, of a, of a game across multiple platforms that introduces microtransactions into the story. Um, and it constantly encourages both gameplay behaviors that are both MMO-like but also single-player-like. And it's insane because, you know, games like Genshin Impact are very good in their own right. But if you strip away, like, all the stuff that is, like, the microtransactions and stuff like that, it becomes a very one-trick pony game. So to your point, you know, it makes sense for them to kind of go this battle pass, like, online game as a service model. But at the same time, like, we're getting so oversaturated with games that are trying to be the yeah. new Genshin. or trying to replicate what Genshin Impact is trying to achieve here. Um, because right now, I think the Western market right now is somewhat collapsing in on itself with the amount of content it's constantly trying to push out. And I get it. These businesses are trying to recuperate all of their money spent, sure. um, on these games. It, it seems like it's no longer the case of a single business model of buy the game, earn profit doesn't work now. anymore. And I get it. Like, I really do. But at this point, you're, you're, you're not making yourself distinguishably different. Right. Uh, you're not making yourself indistinguishable compared to like other products. So right. why would I continue to play this DC game whenever Destiny Light of Light Light Falls right. is coming out and that well, version of what you're trying to build is significantly better? Well, and that's what that's what my issue is. So I totally get what you just said as far as like like that is the way because games are so expensive, you need to develop additional content, you need to keep your player base engaged, buying things. Like I, I, I'm down with all that. I, I like well-executed games as a service. I'm not one of these people that cries every time they see a game as a service. My issue with, that I see with games like Suicide Squad, and look, I could be wrong. Maybe it'll come out and it'll be like a home run. But I've seen this multiple times where the game is not actually designed for for that, for like a like a Destiny type game or mm -hmm. you know like multiplayer games are automatically like it's easy, right? Like put out a new battle pass with a new hero or a new map and skins. That's easy. This is like a half step where it's like, well, here's a seemingly like what looks like a single player or cooperative experience, like a story campaign, you know, with like a beginning and an end. And then here's a battle pass to get you to make you grind all this stuff over and over and over again. It's not designed for like, OK, here is a MMO set in the Suicide Squad universe where you can freely roam and build your character and loot up or something like that. You know, I it's it's this weird like. Here's a Suicide Squad game. I mean, um, Callisto Protocol is another one, right? It's like a, clearly a single player game, like like with a beginning and an end. And here's a battle pass with it. And it's like, what what, what makes this battle pass worth, worth buying it. or playing to finish or any of that? I, I will say from what we saw in the in the Suicide Squad trailer, some of those cosmetics looks pretty flame, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, they had some really good stuff. They put, like, Harley Quinn in Wonder Woman's outfit. I was like, holy shit. Like, that looks like something I would want to play for. Yeah. But then I'm, rem then I'm reminded, like, oh, wait, got to spend 15 bucks on that just to get yeah. it. And I don't necessarily grind challenges. I have to grind probably experience in the battle pass to still yeah. unlock You're gonna it. Be so killing it just robots. makes it less rewarding. And that's my problem with battle passes. And this is what I dislike significantly about Halos is that it's just a grind of just playing games to unlock things. Yeah. There's no real 
unlocks an achievable version of getting that content. The only big thing I think Halo Infinite you can earn is if you've played a shit ton of Halo 5. If you played Halo 5, you'll get the uh, SR Spartan Rank uh, 152 skin that will be given to you in Halo Infinite. Yeah. That is the only thing you could technically I want earn. games to do more stuff like that, but then the problem is that people cry that... You know, oh, it's it's content that's locked behind. I'll never be able to I don't get think it. Enough and... people do that, though, to be honest. Like at this point, like, I think Halo as the example is the point where people were like, oh, dude, you seriously could have gotten that if you played Halo five. I should have played that. Mm. Um, and they announced that like a year before like it came out. That you would get that. Yeah, they announced it like a while before you could do that. So you could technically have grind to get to Halo makes two. it into literally every discussion. dude. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Is. And we're not even done. We're with talking Halo. about Suicide Squad. <laughs> we're talking <laughs> um but like it's because halo was always like the best at it same with like gears of war same thing with like batman right is that like you always had to do some really cool stuff unlock achievements to really get these yeah. cool contents that you could use inside of the game the I, hayabusa armor for halo 3 is unmatched. Yeah, like it's lit you have to go through all these cool things to unlock it yeah. i remember going on to like youtube looking up like which halo ring order i needed to jump it through on the covenant level uh at, after you beat truth like i remember like going and like oh my god dang it I, I jumped through the wrong ring i messed up the code um but no stuff like that was like super rewarding and while it was very simple stuff it showed so much for you especially on the yeah you know multiplayer it, it was something to be truly proud of like like mm -hmm. it, it was like a cosmetic that had like literal value to pe when people saw it like oh my god like recognition and mm -hmm. i i said that for a long time like so many games especially in ranked modes, they don't give you enough for achieving like high ranks or incentivize people. Like, you know, Apex gives you like a dive trail, which is like better than nothing. Yeah, but it's like you, nothing. you really can't do any better than this is all we all, all these people who grinded their minds out and played like thousands of hours of this game in a in one season to, to get there. They, they get a, a, I mean, it's better than nothing, but like, I don't know why more games don't do that because then it makes those ach accomplishments like walking around in that armor and that skin or whatever. I mean, Overwatch still does like gold guns, gold guns, which look like garbage. Like they don't even look good. Even Call of Duty is like still better at it. They're not as good as what they used to be, like especially compared to like Call of Duty Mobile. I got but the diamond can... camo. Uh, it's about platinum camo now, sir. Whatever. Um, but like you can still unlock good stuff that requires yeah. you to actually put the time and skill and effort right, into it right. to, to unlock so the only problem i, I have with that is that call of duty becomes literally about <laughs> doing nothing but getting those camos that's what all people do and whenever one warfare 2 came out i remember seeing tiktoks of just like i played call of duty for 30 plus hours non-stop and unlocked every single platinum weapon skin in the game and i'm like jesus christ bro well a and day all that is is like Again, that's not like a skill thing, like you're saying, though. You know what I mean? That's like, oh, I played the game. <laughs> that's not like I did something really difficult, you know, that I'm proud of. That's like, I grinded this game. That's, yeah. it. that's it. That's how I, I feel about, like, my achievements on, like, my Xbox. Like, if I have, like, all my achievements for, like, Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I, I did all yeah. that. I earned it. I, I still that. I still like the fact that I got Mile High Club in the first Modern Warfare game back in 2005. That's the only achievement that whatever. I don't have, bro. But like, like, but was it 2005? It might have been 2006. I don't remember. For Mile High Club for Modern Warfare One, like, like the OG Modern Warfare One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a uh, that was 2007. Yeah, I got I, like I remember literally trying that for, dude, like weeks. It, it's it, the only achievement that I have left on that game. <laughs> I, now, I could probably like go to it and probably beat it in like two tries. To be honest now that we it, have so. discussed everything except Suicide Squad, I guess we'll move. <laughs> Let's talk about Resident Evil Four next. 